Hello friends, it's Verveen, and today I have a monster of a book for you. Uh, it's actually for me, um, but this is my Kitchen Witch Cookbook, and I'm so excited. I have been wanting to make this for forever, um, and I just kind of couldn't really settle on the vision of exactly what I wanted to do, and you know the pressure of like when you really want something to be good, you want to do it perfect, you don't want to fuck it up. I did fuck it up. Um, I started <laughs> with this cover, which I also think is gorgeous, and I trimmed all my pages to be 11 tall and eight and a half once they were folded. Um, and then I realized that this is 11 and a quarter tall, but this is exactly eight and a half wide, and so they all stuck out the edge. And then I had made my spine two and a half, and I was just like, I think I want a thicker spine. So, because I don't want to, this is not a journal that I want to like fill up and then make another one. This is a journal that I really want to last me many, many years. Let's see if I can get you a little higher up here. Yeah. So we have nine signatures sewn in and just one little charm up top for now. Although I feel like I probably will add to that. Um, and then you can see a little bit of the glue, like dark marks from the glue. And it doesn't really bother me, but I do also think that like over time, I will probably decide to decorate this cover a little bit, um, but that was not a priority for me right now. And then I've used my same closure as usual. It's a little tight right now because it's a new book and I haven't done anything to like flatten the cover. I literally, I was up to like 2.30 in the morning last night making this because I just got bit by the bug and I was like, I have to do it. I have to do it now. I have to finish it tonight. Um, and you know, I looked at the clock and it was like 12 and I was like, oh, I only have like 15 minutes left to work on this. I'll be fine. And then I finished and it was 2.30 and I was like, I thought it was going to be like 12, 15. <laughs> um, so, okay. So let me just walk you through what this is. So my mom, if you wish, anyway, recent videos you might know that my mother used to always have a teapot calendar up on the wall and I was just thinking about junk journals and stuff and right before Christmas I messaged her like hey do you still have any of those old teapot calendars that you're not using and she just said I never throw them away that was the whole conversation and then like a week later <laughs> 20 years of teapot calendars showed up in a box on my doorstep. So I have teapot calendars going back to like 2004. And um, I decided this would be one of the first things I would use them for. I did put one or two spreads uh, or like pages of like teapots in my uh, junk journals that I made when I made my overflow journal. But this book is, there's like four, four types of paper, basically. <laughs> One of the types of paper is teapot calendar pages. One of the types of paper is um, a nice cold press watercolor paper uh, that was 11 by 15. So when I used that, instead of 11 by 17, so when I used that, um, I just scored it at eight and a half. And then I have one page that's full and one page that's a little th shorter. And then I used this, this 11 by 17 parchment. Um, so that's just folded in half and I get full pages. And then I used some scrapbook papers. So the scrapbook papers, again, most of them I fold, I scored at eight and a half and cut to 11. Um, so there's three and a half on one side and then eight and a half on the other side. Most of the papers are from the Craft Consortium Robin Redbreast pack, which I love so much, I um, almost want to get another, no, I do want to get another one. I just <laughs> can't justify spending <laughs> money on another one right now, um, but it's on my wish list. <laughs> and then there's some other scrapbook papers in here that are just kind of random um, from my collection. Like this one, I couldn't tell you like what collection they're from. I just pulled them from various different things. Um, so sorry, but that's pretty much what's in here. And then the cover is bookboard covered in this cotton that I got at Walmart, like 
10 years ago for a project I never did and now I've used it to cover like four journals so um, money well spent I would say <laughs> and with that I am just going to uh, no I'm not quite gonna shut up because I will tell you there's nine signatures and I have arranged them roughly by season which is not to say that that is necessarily how I'm going to use this book I kind of have the vibe that if I have Christmassy recipes, I'll put them in the winter section and so on and so forth. Um, but I reserve the right to use this book however I damn well please. <laughs> and I may or may not choose to do that. <laughs> um, so the first signature is like not really, it's just general, it's not assigned any season. And then the other signatures are early spring, late spring, early summer, late summer, early autumn, late autumn, early winter, late winter. They're not actually by like the month on the calendar pages. It's just by the vibes of the papers and how they made me feel. So that's all I will say about that. I have resisted the temptation to work in this at all yet because I just wanted to show it to you plain first. I will say I did beautiful like proper end papers this time where I let the image like instead of just lining the cover and then sewing stuff in, I like glued it to here and then I sewed the stuff in and then I glued it down all the way over and then glued it to the front paper. And I really love how that came out. I love how you get more of the image that way. And I really, really love the images that I chose. Um, I will not be putting pockets on the cover, on the inside covers of this book because I just love the images. and. I don't know how much of the... Okay, sorry, my timer for my water bath canning of my blackberry preserves went off. <laughs> which brings us back to why I'm making this book, which is to store all of the recipes that I use most often. And uh, I got caught off. I know I was saying that, like, obviously I really don't want to cover this, but, like, I don't want to cover this either. And what I was starting to say, and I'll start flipping while I talk here, is that I don't know how much of the teapot images... I'll be able to bring myself to cover ever at all. But there's plenty of other pages. There's plenty of room to add tip-ins. Um, there's plenty of like spots on pages where I would be happy to add things where it wouldn't cover like the whole thing. Um, and yeah, so there's, there's plenty of room to work in here even though there are plenty of images that I do wanna preserve. And these teapots are really special to me because I grew when, you know, I was growing up with always one of these on the wall in the house for as long as I can remember. <laughs> um, and I only pulled from like three different calendar years. Oh, this was open. But um, I was starting to say this is the only page, the only folio where I actually left the flaps on as fold outs instead of trimming them off. And I kind of wish that I had left them on on more, so, but I saved them all. Um, so I may be doing some repairs on some of them so that I can have some more fold outs that match because I just think that would be really cool. Um, but yeah, so kitchen witchery cooking is very special to me. I love to cook. It's one of my favorite things to do. And it's my favorite way to love on people is to cook for people. Um, I love cooking, putting a big meal together and having people over and feeding them and seeing everyone satisfied. And just like, I saw this meme the other day and it was a bar chart and it was like things that give you feelings of power. And it was like money status when you cook and people like it. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, that's, that's accurate. <laughs> that's true for me. Um, I love this spread, how the colors, like I really tried to make things like this happen where the colors of the teapot and the colors of the paper would play off each other, but I also, I don't know, you'll see. Um, and then, yeah, I don't know what happened to this paper, but I'm not worried about it because it's a junk journal. I get to work on it. So I keep a couple journals or I have been keeping a couple journals with recipes in them, but I just don't like them. Like I use them because I need to reference recipes that I don't wanna be like digging through Pinterest and trying to remember which one was the good one <laughs> um, of the ones that I saved, which one was the one that I liked and that I wanted to do again. 
um, I, you know, I write that down in my book and then I don't have to have an internet connection and I don't have to dig through Pinterest or Google or whatever to find what I'm looking for. I like having it in my book. Um, but I just don't like the standard lined journal. Um, I don't really like it for anything. I've been following more. I've, I've always kind of wanted to be a junk journal person. I just didn't know that junk journals existed and what they were. And so over the past year, I've really like come into my junk journal era and it's opened so many doors for me. It's like, I finally feel like I can keep a grimoire. I finally feel like I can keep a journal. I finally feel like I can keep a cookbook and do it in a way that feels fun and feels authentic to me and feels like really low pressure to add to because like it's a junk journal. You just glue things in and then if you don't like it later, you tear it out or you glue other things over it or whatever. Um, like it's all okay. <laughs> and um, so I love that it's lower pressure. I love that it starts out beautiful. Like the pages start out inspiring. Like I don't feel like you have to add a lot to a page to make it feel fabulous. Like it already starts fabulous. Like again, like these colors with these blues here. I love it. And the, the months will probably get covered up in most of these, but I don't care. Whatever. The borders will probably stay. And I saved all my scraps, so I'm excited to do some paper weaving with some of these borders um, and just see, just see what happens with those. <laughs> but yeah, I'm really excited to have a big book like this that I can add all of my tried and true recipes to. So I'll still use Pinterest for like um, arranging like recipes that I wanna try, um, recipes that I'm interested in trying, recipes that I've, you know, that I wanna try soon or whatever. Um, but then like once I've tried it, if it works and I make it, if I go to wanna make it again, <laughs> um, probably by the time I've made something twice, we'll know, okay, it's time to put it in the journal. And some of them I'll probably handwrite. A lot of them I'll probably use my typewriter to add. Um, and I just, I've really been having the itch to work in this since I made it last night. And I was really just like, I didn't want to film the flip through last night because we didn't have good light because it was the middle of the night. And also because I needed to go to bed because it was 2.30 in the morning. And then I couldn't film it today because my phone was in the repair shop. Um, and so now I finally got my phone back and I have just a little bit of time before um, Oil Coven's having a, a Zoom call. It's like magical show and tell. It's just a casual, casual little coven get together, but it should be a lot of fun and I'm really excited about it. This is the beginning of the fall section. Maybe you can tell. Um, I love this paper. Um, and I love this tea set. I love all these tea sets. They're so cool. Um, what was I even saying? Oh yeah, so we have this little get together happening at uh, in just a little bit, but I have time to film this. And I figure actually for magical show and tell, I probably <laughs> will show off this because it's my newest magical item, the one that's exciting me the most right now. And uh, yeah, once, I'll have, once I have this flip through filmed, again, I really love how these colors play together. Once I have this slip through filmed, then I'll feel like, okay, I can finally do whatever I want in this journal and work in it and know that I have the flip through of how it looked when it was first bound. And then you guys can uh, see it as it changes. This is definitely not one that will have a bunch of like private thoughts in it. So um, I will probably continue to do um, full flip throughs of this as I add to it. Isn't that just gorgeous? And it's also, it's really cool. Like so much of my cooking and my love for cooking and my love for food came from my mother. And so for these to be, like it's not just tea where it's like, it's related to food in the kitchen. It's also like the images remind me of my mother and being home where I, you know, first learned to love cooking. But also like the actual writing on the calendar pages is from my childhood. Like, oh my gosh, Sylvie. That's like my French babysitter from when I was like five came to visit from France like 15 years later. <laughs> and this is Sylvie visiting. Crazy. Um, and there were like I've seen on some of these pages, I think it's in my other junk journal where it says like Cotillion. And it's like, oh, yeah, that's when I back when I was in Cotillion 
or like my little brother's science club. And it's just, it's really special to have those memories. And yeah, a lot of them will get covered up, but I feel like there's a lot of magic in having, um, having these, like, like these images have been loved and used for <laughs> home and family purposes, literally in the kitchen. Like the calendar was always kind of like right adjacent to the kitchen. Um, this cup is just glorious. I, mm, and we're in the winter section now. Um, yeah, I think there's a lot of magic in using these pages that have that tie to my family and to the kitchen of my childhood and to the food of my childhood and to tea, which is, um, actually really like the first plant that, um, like my journey with tea when I started to learn Gong Fu Cha um, a few, I don't know, maybe like eight, eight, ten years ago ish, eight, ten years ago, somewhere in there, <laughs> um, was what I would consider to be like my first real foray into plant magic. Like I feel like tea, the tea plant, Camellia sinensis, is the first plant that I really got to know through. Um, well, so many different layers, but especially through that magical layer. And I feel like plant magic and kitchen witchery are absolutely um, entangled in each other and totally inseparable. And I will say like kitchen witchery for me isn't always about like, oh, we have to like think really hard about what intentions we're putting into, like every dish has to be a spell. Like, no, that's not how it is for me. I do, however, like sometimes I do that. Sometimes I add specific intentions to, um, you know, dishes that I'm making. But usually it's just like, I know that when I am preparing food with love and joy and care and serving food with love and joy and care, that that love and that joy and that care is going into the food and into the people who eat it. And... Um, I know that the people who eat it feel the difference. And that to me is magic. That to me is kitchen witchery. Just a love for the food, a love for the ingredients, a love for the process, and a love for the sharing of the abundance. <laughs> um, and this, here we are at the last end page. Oh God, look how these, like this is, it's, it's really quite springy even though, well, technically citrus is winter fruit. Um, but like this picture really feels quite springy and yet these yellows and this blue, I just feel like it, and these greens, it goes so well with this winter paper from this craft consortium collection. And yeah, I absolutely need more of these papers. Um, she says, having only used a very, very few of them, I wasn't even sure if I was going to use it in my cookbook. And then I found, then I saw this one. And I was like, okay, we're taking one of these for the autumn section and one of these for the winter section. And so I actually used two pages of this one. And then I used one page of all of the other ones that are in the book. But that is the whole cookbook for now. And you might've seen um, here, I think I've got a, just a little pearl inside, which is just um, keeping this knot from, keeping this string from slipping out through the eyelet because that's how I have attached, um, my charm on the outside. And then I said briefly that I use the same closure as I do in all my other journals. That is true, but if you haven't seen my other videos, it's just a little post here. And then there's an eyelet on the back cover. And then I tie a, um, ribbon or string or whatever through the eyelet. And then go ahead and to close it, like this is just a ribbon, right? So to close it, I will tie it, but then every time I open and close it, I don't have to tie it every time. Um, I just have to tie it when I wanna adjust how tight or loose it is. So usually all I have to do is slip it off, open, close, slip it back on. Um, because it is so new and so empty, you can't really like, um, 
usually when there's like when it's thicker and there's more pages you can like compress it and count on that to provide tension and then you can press down and it's a lot easier to pull this off i have to have this really tight right now to have it even stay on at all so um it is what it is but as this journal grows and gets chonkier which it certainly will and i'm very excited for that to happen um i will be able to retie this and if it ever even gets to a point I don't think it will, but if it gets to a point where this is too short, I can always pull this out and replace it with a new string that's longer um, so I can have the desired effect. But, oh, I didn't mean to untie that. It just was a, I just did it. It was just a fidget. <laughs> um, but now here we are, it's untied. Let's just open it and let's just take one more look at these beautiful end pages. And of course, I had to have the rose teapot be the first thing that you see. So I'm very excited to use um, probably this flap to do like a dedication and book blessing, um, like a title title page kind of thing on here. And I probably won't um, extend this page. A lot of the other like short pages, I probably will end up extending in some way. Maybe not these ones, um, but the scrapbook ones that are a lot shorter. I probably will end up extending those in one way or another, um, but that's not something I'm worried about at this time. That's a bridge I will cross when I get to it. And God, I just, I just, oh, mm. it makes me so happy. I have been dreaming of having a book like this for so long and I have it now. It's in my hands. I made it with my own two hands and I can fill it with my own two hands and, um, yeah, I'm very excited. So now I am going to add some of my tried and true recipes that I've made most recently and uh, work on my title page and stuff. But you can, uh, we'll catch you up on all that stuff later. Thank you so much for joining me for this flip through and for sharing in my joy over my new Kitchen Witch Cookbook. I literally could not be more thrilled with how this came out. Um, and it is my pleasure to share from the overflow um, my joy with you. And also, let me know, guys, would any of you want something like this but not quite as huge? Because, one, like I said, I have 20 years of teapot calendars, so I'm not low on those. But two, I already made this cover, and obviously, like, you know, I would touch it up. It's not done. There's, like, you can see the PVA line here. Um, I would do more work to this to get it ready to sell, but, um, and we need end papers, you know, it needs to be bound, it needs signatures, but I'm kind of thinking this would be really perfect to make another cookbook for, um, uh, out of, but like for someone else. And so, you know, I have some of these that I cut out for my thing that I just didn't use in it. Um, and then I can always make more and I have more of the other papers. So let me know if that is something that you would like. Um, I will probably make it either way and put it up for sale. Um, but, you know, if more people are interested, that would be good to know because then I could find a way to make more of them. I really like the bigger size for a cookbook. I just feel, I don't know, it feels right to me. Um, yeah, anyhow, okay, I'm excited. I could talk for a really long time. <laughs> But I'm going to let you go. Thank you so much for joining me. And I hope you have a wonderful, magical day. And I'll see you in my next video. Bye.